All right, uh, the 22nd of August, 2015. This is Roger, and this is my uh, 1936 Plymouth with an LS3. I believe this should be um, Plymouth Rat Rod Build part number 21 or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to pretend like I haven't cranked this sucker up yet, but uh, I have about three days ago. A um, couple of start procedures you actually have to look at. Make sure you have oil in the thing. Make sure you got transmission fluid in it, Dextron 6 and make sure you got the right oil in it. Now, speaking of oil, check, uh, check the dipstick before you go buy. Uh, six quarts of very expensive synthetic oil and pour it in there because I actually had the double amount of oil in there so I actually checked it right before I cranked it up and uh, had to get the drain plug in and drain some, uh, some of my expensive oil back out of there. Anyway, engine actually came with oil already and it didn't know that should happen. Uh, anyway, so let me show you this thing real quick before I crank it up. Actually looking real good up in here. I'll just do a quick little pan around. Those are my power steering lines with the height adjustable valve. So you can actually back off your power steering if you got too much power steering. And uh, that's a Mustang 2 rack and pinion steering on the bottom. This is my nice little stainless steel hoses that I put a whole bunch of little pieces together and come all the way around here. Mass airflow sensor. Everything's up and everything's working. There's the front of it. I went ahead and got my air conditioning uh, condenser hooked up in the front Just so I don't have to take it back apart and right here. Sorry. I got my easy wiring harness uh, What's nice about that like every four inches it actually shows you where it's supposed to go and I put about four of those in I wrap all my stuff in this loom right here and this particular one actually runs inside the frame and pops out right here and I'll just go ahead and hook up the lights when I get a chance, but uh Show you this little thing right here because this took a lot of head scratching right here because I couldn't figure it out. This right here is actually what's called a vent hose. And uh, because GM or these LS engines don't have an intake manifold on them that passes uh, water back and forth, uh, you've got to hook this little hose up right here to stop all that trapped steam and hot air pockets. And what it does, I just route it all the way up here with a nice little stainless steel high pressure hose. And then I weld this little bung up here. Actually, Roland welded it in for me. So it's a nice little touch. I think it looks kind of neat. And I'll show you down here. I went ahead and put the stainless steel down here as well. And it just runs down there and routes down there. I polished that up a little bit on my little polisher over there. Um, this is just temporary right here. I got my little loop here. They say don't actually just plug those off because what you do is you can create air pockets again. And the last thing I want to do is create an air pocket when I'm. Um, Spending $11,800 after the rebate on a motor and a transmission. Oh, you probably saw my little air conditioner down there. I went ahead and had to change that out with one that I got from, uh, from Summit Racing because the one that actually comes with the Cadillac CVT has some kind of weird ass fitting connectors on it. So I went ahead, before I do all kinds of modifications, I went ahead and dropped that one. The other one I'll drop on eBay. Anyway, real quick here. Ich schaut mal ganz kurz auf Deutsch um. Uh, Hier ist mein 36er Plymouth. Hier ist mein Computer. Ich muss mal ganz kurz hier mit dem Finger wackeln. There it is. Und uh, das muss man jetzt alles manuell einstellen oder muss man nicht. Das ist alles pre-programmed. Und dann kann man hier schön anstarten. And here, I'm going to crank it up real quick. It's pretty simple. I know I got a lot of wiring here right now, but all of my stuff is actually taped off on the corner. This is just like lights, gauges. Um, um, amplifier, radio, stuff like that. And uh, here's my little wiring harness on the inside right here. Got everything already hooked up. It'll all be cleaned up a little bit. There's my, if you can see way, way back, there's my transmission controller, my Supermatic. And way, way in the back, you can't see that, is actually my um, my engine control at ECU. But this is, a, this is easy wiring harness right here. Uh, they're about 155, 165 bucks. I really, really recommend those things because I put about four of them in right now and they work great. This right here is my uh, my combination valve, they call it. I put on all the cars. And this is a um, a master cylinder from a Ford Explorer, the same thing I got the rear axle out of. And right here, if you recognize, this is actually what's called a line lock. So you can actually take this right here, hook it up to power and then it blocks the line once you hit on the brakes and you can do nice little smoky burnouts without ruining your rear brakes. Anyway, let me come out of here. I'll come over here. Actually cut the motor on. And 
then just run right over here, kill this, go to Chevrolet Performance, and it'll bring it right up. And there's all my specs, it's acquiring the data right now. And then there you go. So it's kind of cool, I'll just maximize this so you can see it. And then every all your specs show up in here. show here the only problem I have is right here see where it says manual for the uh, the current mode of the transmission I cannot get that to actually kick back to an automatic mode right now I've got my little switcher here for manual up down shift this is temporary right now but uh, when you take the blue the green and red wire off and put it to ground and take the ground off it's supposed to go back into automatic mode and as you can see right here it doesn't no big deal i don't know what the problem is but the, the, the transmission actually shifts it shifts great and everything so i don't have to worry about that the transmission's messed up i actually think it's the the control module and uh hopefully those aren't too expensive if not i'm going to write gm performance parts and tell them to send me another one because i don't think it's uh, anything in the wiring i have right here i've actually already owned it out it's not accidentally shorted out till it gets ground it's one of those things when you actually shift it and move it over in a regular camaro or in a corvette it gives ground to the back of that switch right there and then you can go paddle shift up and down or you can manually push it back and up temporarily so i'll show you that feature one more time right here right here you can see that down up shift and then when you go back to neutral and you disconnect it the ground right now disappears and it's supposed to go back in automatic mode anyway that's the only problem i have right now now, I do want to show you one other thing right down here before I kill it. Is I got my electric cutouts already hooked up, and I'm going to try to place this thing down here so you can see those. transmission coolers I went ahead those press right there and I stuck them right underneath the running board so you don't actually see them so I got two of them down here and they actually get a little bit of heat and you can see already already starting to cool the transmission so anyway let me go right ahead to the motor also this thing läuft extrem ruhig keine Probleme got good oil pressure oil pressure this thing is actually three volts according to the voltmeter and then three volts equates to about 85 psi of pressure and then so forth it degrees it down um, right here is my um, my fuel pressure fuel pressure it says according to this is supposed to be about 70 according to the book it's supposed to be 65 so either this is off a little bit or I got a little bit too much fuel pressure but I got my uh, my fuel pressure actually running inside the frame rail right there and I think that's about it. I've already checked this thing. It cuts on at 210 is when the fans cut on and then they cut back off. So uh, really stoked about this thing. It's running perfect. Let me go ahead and cut this thing off. And then when you cut it off, it vibrates right now because every piece of metal in here is loose right now. And then you lose more of your spec. It'll go uh, non-connected here in just a second. Again, that's the only little issue I have right now. I gotta get that thing to manually or to go back into automatic mode. So that's about it. I think that's all I wanted to show you guys this time. So stoked, the thing is running perfect. I got my little peanut gallery over here watching. Say something in English, come on folks. Hi. Hi. There we go. So anyway, and uh, everybody knows the coupe. Uh, the coupe took us all the way down to Switzerland, um, 4th of July. We cruised around there for seven days, got a couple of 3,000 meter passes in, which is about uh, 8,500 feet for you folks in America. 
and uh, with air conditioning running, and I'm the only guy who made it to the top and the bottom of the hills without overheating. All my little small block Chevy friends and Ford friends actually had a couple of issues, not all of them, but uh, this thing rode super smooth all the way down there and back. So anyway, um, just like the 55 Chevy four years ago, this thing is actually starting to lose some of its appeal right now because I'm spending most of my time on the Plymouth right now. Anyway, interior is, uh, is looking kind of rough right now, but it's actually done. You've seen it in the other videos. It's um, sitting right back there. There are the seats and there are my panels. They're just waiting to go back in right now. I don't actually want to put them in right now until I get the roof welded in this thing. There's my air conditioning heater core unit. I've already got my heater hose kit and my uh, AC line kit. And I got my own bead pressers now. There's where the roof is gonna go in. And I think that's about it. So I'll go back to my buddy's roadkill over here. This is a really good idea they have. Is I gave myself little lists right here. Also, ich mache mir kleine Listen hier. Und die Listen gehe ich hier runter. Und wenn es in grün jetzt ist, dann habe ich schon fertig. Anyway, if it's in green, I've done it. Keep on going down, keep on going down. And eventually, when I get to the bottom here, because obviously I add to this list, the car will be done right about down here someplace. And this is a list I started about a year ago. Gas tank, body mounts, blah, blah, blah. Hard mount seats, that's just drilling a couple of holes. I've already got the carpet. I'm trying to find a guy who cuts flat glass over here. It's getting rarer and rarer because all car glass is curved now. And that's about it. Also, uh, from Deutschland, we have the 22nd August 2015, 2015, August 22nd. And uh, the Plymouth is on the road. Uh, I'm not going to say I haven't cranked this thing up about three days ago when I got the first crank up on it, but uh, it's actually running badass. Power steering's great, independent front suspension works. I just have a little tune on the front of it with an eight inch tow in, and that actually got me down the road. We've had this thing at about 40, 45, 50 miles an hour, and uh, it actually runs pretty good. Of course, I'll go to a, a shop and actually have an alignment done on the front, and this is pretty simple because I can do all kinds of alignments with that Mustang 2 front end, tubular A on it, by the way. Um, that's about it. So, car runs great. So that's it for uh, Plymouth Rat Rod Build part number 21. Take care.